your community covered. The NL Morning News with Howie Reimer on 610 AM. Well, no doubt you've been hearing about Facebook getting called out by a whistleblower, former uh, Facebook employee, Francis Hagen, last weekend on 60 Minutes. Just absolutely uh, gripping stuff. And she claims it, and many others have as well, she claims it and its uh, sister platforms help to, among other things, influence elections, contribute to teen depression, suicidal thoughts, maybe even suicide, uh, particularly in girls and young women. Generally, just, uh, you know, an adversarial environment. So uh, is this enough to change how they're going to conduct their business and, you know, set up their algorithms and so forth? We're joined this morning by Dr. Hope, American Culture College professor, PhD in clinical psychology. Good morning, Dr. Hope from San Diego. How are you? I'm good, Howie. How are you? Thank you for having me to discuss this really important issue. Yeah, uh, the the world is a little upside down. It's raining in San Diego and it's uh, sunny in Canada here, but uh, good good to have you here. Um, do you, Thank you. Did, I mean, we, we've seen with so many other things that uh, once the outrage dies down, we just go back to normal. Do you think there is a, a chance that this could be a turning point for how social networks uh, conduct their business? Well, I, I do. I think that we can't just rely on Facebook clearly to regulate itself. And I think we've learned we can't just rely on the government to regulate itself. I think this comes back to a really important point about self-management. You know, we're looking at a 21st century problem, right? But to regulate it, we're going to have to reach deep and go, I think, back to an old-fashioned kind of solution where we look at morality and communication and self-management. And that might even mean boycotting the platforms. I know people are like, no, but... (laughs) Action, you know, action and clicks and money and engagement is what speaks to these platforms. It's what speaks to Zuckerberg. So we have to speak in the language that people speak in order for them to hear us. So I'm not sure we can just rely externally. I think we're going to have to go deep and look at our own kind of investment of time and emotion and engagement in these platforms and really revise. How we how we monitor our day and our time, and especially how we monitor our kids and are, what they're doing. Are are these young men and women going to be able? Well, adults too, but I, you know, we've uh, heard about how damaging, particularly Instagram, can be for for young uh, women and girls. Uh, is it realistic, uh, you know, to ask for a boycott with this uh, addiction component? It's a really important point. I was thinking about that this morning because while the DSM does not have digital addiction as a category yet, you know, the Bible of psychiatry and psychology, the reality is we know that the dopamine hits, especially from inciting anger or inciting bad feelings, are what create the engagement. I think, like with anything else, we're going to have to be the gatekeepers with our kids. We're going to have to come down a little hard And just like we wouldn't let them play with matches when they're five years old, or we might teach them that, like, okay, here's how you light a candle safely, but then you blow it out and you walk away, I think we're going to have to instill a little old-fashioned accountability for ourselves and model for ourselves, for our kids, but also that there's going to be limits. Like, we don't just, you know, say, here, have that cable and find every – or. Here, you're five years old. Have at the dark web and just, you know, play in the digital playground. This is a digital playground, and it's not just skin knees. I mean, we're talking people's lives. So I think we're going to have to instill some self-management, some old-fashioned, what are our kids doing, where are they, and we're going to have to be more engaged. We're going to have to work in order to quell this in our young girls. And I think we're going to have to bring awareness and communicate more with our kids about, well, how did you feel when you came off of that? And, well, if if that makes you feel bad, we don't run towards fire or we run away from it. So I don't think it's going to be easy. I'm not saying, oh, this is a magic panacea. I don't think it's going to be easy. I mean, hopefully we'll we'll have some laws that are enacted based on the congressional hearing that will put some stop gaps, but we can't rely on that. 
we can, we've learned this year, right? We have to learn to be more self-reliant in all areas of our lives. One of the many things that the viruses have exposed, and this is a viral story in a viral age. So I think that we're going to have to really dig deep and go back to an old fashioned solution of really communication, morality, impulse control. And they've shown that even people, there was a study in the New Yorker today that even people who take a 30 day break from social media, when they return, they're able to moderate their use much better, including teens. So I think maybe we start slow and we start talking to our kids about this because we wouldn't, we wouldn't throw them in a jungle, right? We wouldn't just like throw them into the lion's den at the zoo, you know? So that's what we're doing in the digital playground. And we have proof now that that's what we're doing. We might've thought it, but now we have proof. So now the question is going to be, what are we going to do to change our own lives? It comes back to self-responsibility and self-control and self-management, I think. Do you ever feel like just throwing your phone away? I mean, <laughs> the the reliance, yeah. the reliance. <laughs> the, I mean, just the fact that Quite we're honestly, so yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I, I did want to, yeah, you mentioned that, you know, this has got to be more a behavioral and, and, uh, you know, taught thing and, you know, more interaction with your kids and so forth. I, I, I would imagine, yeah, to rely on lawmakers is not the way to go. I mean, we, we've seen that particularly U S lawmakers, they don't have an appetite for gun control. I, I don't imagine this would be, uh, you know, uh, high on their list as well, Probably. unless, unless of course yeah. it, it did, uh, you know, line their pockets and there was uh, more at stake for them. I agree. And I, I just have to share, you know, transparently, I, you know, I've, I've been struggling with a crisis of conscience of this all week because I'm not a big Facebook user to begin with. I'm not, it's just not, but I do have family on there. You know, of course, I'd like the minimal, but I still thought, you know, I don't like this. This feels really icky. And so I've kind of sent out a few messages to people I care about. Like, if you need me, here I am, but I'm logging off. And that's my personal decision. I'm not going to tell everybody to do that. But there is a movement going on, um, moveon.org, which is, I don't know if in Canada you're aware of it, but it's a, it's a viral movement to create political change through petition that gets distributed through um, digital avenues. And there's a national boycott of Facebook and its subsidiary platforms. I think it's November 6th, Election Day. Mm -hmm. um, no coincidence there. So there's going to be a, um, because as you know, in the six hours that Facebook went black, no coincidence, <laughs> apparently, before, <laughs> you know, before she went in front of the congressional hearing, Mark Zuckerberg lost $13 billion in six hours. And so obviously money talks. Mm -hmm. And money is what speaks to this company. So there is a national boycott. I know I'm going to participate in that. And I'm, I'm probably going to log out because I see how hard it is for teens today. Forget, forget the phones, forget the platforms. But yes, to your question, do I want to throw out my phone? Yes, except mm -hmm. I got rid of my landline. <laughs> so I can't do that. But I, what I can do is log out, moderate, and also just really use the platform for its mission statement. I think that's what was so compelling about Francis Hogan's testimony was the platform was meant to be positive, to connect people for positive communication. And that is absolutely not what it's doing. And we're going to have to course correct, I think, ourselves as a society. Absolutely. Well said. Um, so where can we get a look at your, your column on point? Well, this is my, this is part of me on point, but you can find me on LinkedIn is probably the best place to find the various avenues for me. It's Dr. Hope, H-O-P-E, Umansky, U-M-A-N-S-K-Y. You can find in my profile, my website there, I have a psychology website, Hope, Health and Healing, and I have more of my consulting, which is innovation. And you can find me there. It's it's fascinating. I mean, it's it, it's a scary time, but it's a fascinating topic. And uh, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Okay. Nice speaking with you and your audience. Hope to talk again soon.